Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk, talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new. Yeah. Time change happened. Um, I'm actually loving, I'm, I'm a proponent of the time change, except we do lose that hour, <sighs> but I am so happy that it's still sunny outside right now Yeah. because that means that I'm going to be able to walk to work now. And when I get off of work, it's not going to be pitch black and I have to worry about getting hit by a car. If somebody ran on a platform of getting rid of time change and the penny, I would vote for them. Yeah. That's how much I hate it. But Okay. I can I see your point there, but I do love like this time where it's still sunny outside. It so is can great. You just yeah. keep this time. That's fine. Okay, you're a proponent of that. Compromise. Compromise. <laughs> Joining tonight as guest co-host is Liz Newton Smith, better known as the Vintage Fork. Uh, what are your feelings on the time change? I love a long day, like yeah. daylight all day long, um, because when you get home, you want to like go for a walk. I love to walk my dog. Like, I just, I like it. it. Today is the hardest and then the rest of the week will be. But once next weekend rolls around, I'm going to be happy about it. You know what though? It really wasn't that bad today. I woke up at like, it's, it was seven o'clock. I naturally just, my body is like wake up yeah and i think it was still dark outside yeah and i looked at bob and i was like it is seven o'clock right now and he was like i know and we went back to bed and then woke up at 10 and it was fine so i got my sleep i'm good like i did it, the same thing I, I, yeah. I usually wake up around 6 30 woke up at 7 30 and went back to sleep for a little bit but i wanted to make these eggs this morning mm. and so i got up put the cv on yeah did all that, got ready. There nice go. And I just, it's nice. I, I just, I like being, leaving the station or leaving work and it's still being daylight yeah, outside because totally. it makes me not feel like I um, need to go hibernate in my house. Like I can go out and do stuff and it's not, you know, cause I already feel like I'm on my mall and I'm like, it's nine o'clock at night. We're, we're going to bed, you yeah. know, <laughs> maybe, maybe now I won't be feeling right. like that. Um, it was both of our birthdays yeah. yours was what the second the second okay yeah. mine was the eighth bob took me to la pagua yeah, yeah which i now this is a controversial opinion but i feel like la pagua has the best margaritas in lafayette i need to go back i haven't been in a while but i do love their mexican food i am like this past week has been insane because it was mardi gras I, I i didn't even mardi gras passed me on by because i had to work i had two papers due for school this is my second to last week of school Next week is going to be easy selling, but I had like an in incredibly stressful week. But well, I'm already grown enough for you. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> you took care of it for yeah. me. But I, um, I just, I, I told him, I said, I just want margaritas and chips and queso <laughs> was was my only requirement. And I was like, but I also want the food to be good too. And so we were kind of looking at other places, like. I knew that La Pagua had good margaritas. I didn't know how their queso was. It's okay. I've I had, liked it. I've had better queso. Is it's it not, white or yellow? It's, it's white. 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 It's okay. a white one. And it wasn't bad, but it's, you know, the margaritas far, you know, made up for yeah. it. And then also they have amazing tic tacos, pupusas, and their tortas there is are really good got? too. I, I saw a picture. I got a torta. He okay. got the torta. Got the and I got the pupusas. And somebody, I posted the pictures on Facebook and someone made the comment that it wasn't a real torta because the bread was actually like a po' boy bread instead of it the did torta. Look like it was French bread. Right? Yes, okay, instead of the torta bread. And one of my other followers brought up this great point that um, the only place in town that makes the fresh bread for the tortas is, um, is one of the Spanish markets. And it's only good for like two days. Hmm. And the average uh, restaurant goer at La Pagua is not going to order a torta. They're they're there for enchiladas and tacos and stuff. So it would it would do him a disservice to to get that kind of bread for so it. A torta is a it's a sandwich. Yeah, it's like a I call it a Mexican po' boy, but it's on like a round. It's like a fatter round bread. Okay. And then um, usually you'll you can get like the same types of taco toppings, but then they'll do um, you can get like cheese sometimes. They'll have like this. May, like this thick mayo or like this cream on it like mayo. they get crazy <laughs> with the sandwiches and they're huge like some of the places that make them like they're the size of your head 
But I've always liked theirs, even if it is on the po' boy bread. That was Bob's was good. first one that you've had, I right? Think so. Yeah, I mean, you can't get wrong with French bread, and it looked like it was like really flaky and delicious. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't um, heavy. Yeah, I've. I mean, I've had them before, and I, I think that they're delicious and they're fine. But they're margaritas. Like I, or I told yeah, them, I was like, we're was gonna go highlight. back, and, and we almost ordered another pitcher because they were so. <laughs> And I like I am such a lightweight. I think after the first sip, yeah, <laughs> I was already because we got because I don't do frozen. I was about to say, was it yeah. on the rocks? Yeah, I yeah. always do on the rocks because they're stiffer, and you know, and it, yeah. yeah, it was the best margaritas I had since we were in Shreveport. See, I don't remember. Oh, you know what? Uh, the 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 fish taco place had really good margaritas. Yeah. Those were, and they also had. We didn't get a chance to get it, but they had the. Macaletas, 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 which is probably it's, didn't pronounce that right either. For those that don't know, it's it's basically a uh, Bloody Mary, but instead of vodka, they put in uh, beer, yeah. and it sounds kind of gross. And they use but Clamato, it's amazing. And they usually use Clamato. It's as so the, good. Yeah, no, I don't like them. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a fan. Have you had them before? I have not. I've never even heard of it actually. There's only a few places okay. in town that have it. Yeah. But I was thinking about it, you know, if I want, because I was like, okay, I wanted margaritas. And if it's like, so I'm going to go there. But if I want like just to eat chips and salsa, I may go to La Hacienda. Or, I like that one. Or El P- uh, Potrillo, which is on the no- north side of okay. town. That's on Moss Street. Okay. They're really good tax oh, yeah. as well, which would have been my, I would have picked there. You, you could have gotten on the birthday wall. <laughs> no, that was also partially why I didn't go there because I know that they like do this big thing for your birthday. Yeah, and they take but a also, Polaroid of you. The margaritas are better at La Pagua, so I, it was like it was a compromise thing. I need to go get one. And then for my for lunch, my work bought me Zias. I saw that, so I got ribs. Yeah, which a half rack of lit ribs is a lot. I didn't even. I wasn't thinking about is it. it. They're like chili glazed Thai ribs. I got the Thai uh, ribs yeah. and then t- double corn grits. Uh, <laughs> so I only and I was only able to eat like half of it. I, and I wanted a nap so bad afterwards. Fair, but it was it was a good birthday. And then we went to indulge afterwards, yes. which was packed. I really? hadn't been there yeah. in a while. So. First off, I hadn't been to La Bagua in a while, and they've expanded. Like, they bought the other building that was next to them. They've expanded out. They have two bars now. Yeah. Wow. So it's huge in okay. there now. I don't know. It looks like they were still, like, working on it. So I don't know exactly what they're, you know, planning to do with that. Yeah, it, it, it was interesting because it, like, being a design nerd... Like it looked like two different restaurants smushed together. Any like live music or I'm thinking that moment. maybe what they're gonna do yeah. okay. though. Yeah, I'm thinking they have so to small. do and to do another bar. Like yeah. that's what I would think that they're gonna be doing with that, which means that they're competing with uh, Cafe Habana because Cafe Habana has their Latin night. Oh, yeah. Friday night. Um, El Paso true. always has live music. At least yeah. Mount Pinhook always has live music outside. Oh, so they I mean, may be. That may be what yeah. they're planning to do. It's in off the, the pull chain. <laughs> <laughs> and then indulge. I hadn't been there in a while. They were packed. That's good to hear. And you know, I wanted. Cake. That was an interesting place. Yeah, I've never been there. Really? Yeah. That's. I can't believe you've never been there before. They have really good. Che- they have their uh, mint chocolate cheesecake for March. Oh, that Everything is mint Oreo right now, and I'm super excited about I it. I sweets for Lent, so oh. eating sweet anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. All right, we are going to take our first break, and when we come back, we have more with Liz. So come back to us. It is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Yeah. Go along on all of Tiffany's food adventures. Like the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on Facebook. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, joined as always by Bob Burrell. What? what? Um, we also have a son here tonight um, who is our resident uh, special effects, sound, sound yeah. effects. Yeah, let's rock it out. Yes. He's practicing early. <laughs> we let him on the air, what, like the last time he was here. Yeah. And so today, just like you, by the way, yes. you did radio one time and then we couldn't get you off. Yep. So he's kind of taken on to, to doing the sound effects for the for the show when he's a, here. A Do you have another? Phone yeah. If you hear that ding, make sure to thumbs up. <laughs> 
So he's you, been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah, <laughs> give us, give us a like. <laughs> he was talking about uh, subscribing to to his channel yeah. the other day. I was like, Bobby, you have to stop letting him watch so much YouTube. <laughs> but he actually does watch like science stuff on YouTube, so it's pretty cool. It's still kids science, but yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's fascinating. All right, it and, is. And joining tonight as guest co-host is Liz Newton Smith with the Vintage Fork. Hey y'all. Um, okay, we're gonna talk about so last on last week's show. If you ca- caught the first little section of the show, uh, I went on a rant about waiter, <laughs> yeah. and then and then this week it was released that there's actually a class action lawsuit against them because drivers are claiming that um, they're not getting paid minimum wage; they're making below minimum wage. If you factor in um, having to pay for car repairs and gas and, and yeah. things of that nature. Which I f- have heard from numerous people uh, that is it's true. Somebody said that they made, like, once they factored everything in, they were making $4.50 an hour. Yeah, that's rough. Which I thought that their way around that, because I know for a long time, they used to list um, drivers as independent contractors. That's what I was wondering. And I thought that that's their way Could of getting around that. But then also, it's coming out, they're alleging that... Yes, they were classified as independent independent contractors, but they were working as full time employees, and they weren't being like paid for overtime and and things of that nature as well. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, you know, did they did they grow too fast? I I I, I know I knew we were going to talk about I this because I saw it on your Facebook. And <laughs> I was like, I don't know what my opinion is because I don't know all the facts. Number one, and right? I never worked in like the restaurant industry where. You know, waiters and waitresses, they don't make minimum wage necessarily because yeah. they have the tip factor. Exactly. So, and you do tip on waiter because it makes a sad face when you don't want to tip. The whole <laughs> thing. And it like stresses me out and I get really anxious. Yeah, but it's so. a tip before you get service yeah, too. Yeah, I know. Which I totally don't agree with. And that's that's a whole thing too. Like with everyone's service, we were talking about yeah. that last week that if you had a bad service, you're going to tip you're less. Okay. And even if this driver, you know, yeah, isn't going to yeah. get, you know, be at fault for that. So I brought in when I posted about it on social media, the argument that a lot of restaurants are wanting to do away with tipping yeah. altogether and then just pay their employees minimum wage. And I think a uh, wing finger is actually chimed in and said they pay their employees minimum wage. Okay. So I think, and I'm, may completely be wrong but if you are a server they can and you do the tip thing it's i think they can pay you 213 215 an twos. hour now if you do not make enough tips to make minimum wage the restaurant has to to bump you to get, to give you minimum wage so they tally so they them. have like a buffer the problem with waiter and i knew it one time this is not. I do not know what they pay now. I've heard that everyone's gone up to five dollars an hour now. I don't know. At one time, if you were part time with waiter, you made two fifty an hour, and if you were an employee, like a full time employee, you made five dollars an hour. I've I've heard that they've done away with that. That all the drivers make five dollars an hour plus tips, and they're not independent contractors, and they're not supposed to be classified as independent okay. contractors anymore. The problem is, is that you know you're making that. Plus your tips, but then you have to pay for your gas. You have to pay for car repairs. And this isn't anything new. My um, my ex-husband, when he was in high school and then when he was in college, he delivered pizzas for, for a living. Yeah. And he had an older truck. And I remember it being incredibly bad wear and tear on your vehicle. Oh, totally. And I, I mean, I don't remember how it worked for him because he got tips too. And I don't know if they made minimum wage and they got to keep their tips or what, but it's kind of the same thing. And I, and in the article, it was saying that um, some pizza delivery places have gotten in trouble in the past for this, for the same thing. But I was also noticing from this article that it was saying, if you make minimum wage and you work 40 hours a week, it's only $250 a week. And then what was it? There was a study that just came out that said no in no state in America can you afford a two bedroom apartment on minimum wage? No, I've and, done the math before. Yeah, it's not much. And I make roughly double that. Yeah, 
and I'm I struggle, yeah. you know, to get by. So I was just I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like how are these people surviving on two hundred and fifty dollars a yeah. week? And the answer is they're not. But do you think a lot of people are full time waiter employees? Because I mean, I toy with the idea of like everything. Right. I even applied to be a ship shopper just because. If I have some extra time, I'm going to go do something. I mean, yeah. a lot of people do it as a side hustle, but yeah. I think if That's there's a few people that it is it's their main job. job. I know, too, that when Wainer first started out, and that's and it's why, it's why I don't want to give them too much, you know, hell because of this. Because when they started was when the a lot of people in the oil industry were losing jobs. And yeah. I know a lot of workers that went on to work for waiter full time. And at that time, the drivers were making really great money because they're, they were new in the market. There wasn't a lot of drivers. They were bringing yeah. home a lot. Now the market is a little more saturated. They still don't have enough drivers though, but they have a lot that it's, it's not, they're not making as much money as they once did with them. I've heard a complaint a lot of times from drivers in that way. And I don't know. You're right. I don't know how many are working as full-time drivers with Waiter. Because um, we're in so much of a side hustle I know, uh, job. Side hustle and I, everything. I know like, a lot know. of people, like a lot of the my um, co-workers side hustle with Waiter. I've wanted to do it Me in too. the past. I, I was like, Uber or Waiter? Well, Waiter, exactly. I don't have food in my car. I don't have to worry about somebody throwing up in my car. <laughs> See, and that's the thing, too. I was like, well, if this is a problem for a waiter, I wonder how Uber pays their drivers, too, because it would be along the same lines. But I also know to work with with Uber, you have to have a, and this may have changed, too, when I looked into it, like a 2008 or above okay. year model, and I don't have it, and that... I think potentially helps with gas mileage and, and wear and tear sure. on, the, on the vehicle. Like, like ship shoppers, like they have to drive to the grocery store and drive to somebody's house and yeah. drop it off. And I don't know how tipping works, but I think they get paid a lot. So I don't know to their website and the interviews. Mm. I don't so. know what's going to happen with this class action lawsuit, like yeah. how it's going to impact waiter yeah. it, and what it's going to do. I think waiter is so good for the, for the local restaurants here. Yeah. I've had a yeah. restaurant, um, you know, tell my husband because he deals with restaurants um, that their business tremendously picked up after waiter because it's so easy just to order from your phone. Even if you're going to pick it up yourself, it gives you the pictures of all the yeah. food and it gives you the option that you might not think to go there. You yeah. Know? I'm and so also like you, a lot of restaurants, they don't have their own delivery service exactly. anymore. Yeah. They've just been using yeah. Waiter. And, I mean, Waiter does have the best pick of the restaurants that yeah. are on it. I have I was looking at some of the other newer um, delivery services that have come into the market, and it's a lot of the chain restaurants. It's yeah. a lot of well, one restaurant with was, another color shirt going into a restaurant. <laughs> I was driving yesterday, and I was like, that's Who is not that? a Waiter shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, DoorDash is the newest person okay. uh, on the block. It was a red shirt. I don't but know But they, <clears throat> they didn't have a lot. And then one of the menus for a restaurant that we order from quite a bit, like we order and go pick it up, yeah. the menu was completely different. Oh, that's crazy. So I was like, where where is this menu coming from? But I'm just, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with all of this unfolding. I'm also surprised with as popular as Waiter has become, that we don't have more virtual restaurants happening yeah. in in the area and a virtual restaurant in case you guys listening aren't aware it's where it's only delivered like they don't have yeah. a storefront you basically order through a service like waiter you go pick they pick up their food um from this place and then deliver it to you like there's no kinda staff like, there's no you know kind of like dynasty yeah. Cool. yes yeah somebody told me so I cannot think of the name. It's like the commercial kitchen space you can rent here in town. Yeah, Acadiana um, Food Hub. Yes, yeah, so they have like freezers and stuff too. So I was at dinner with somebody and they're on the board for them and they were saying how, I can't remember what, what place it is. It might be the pie place, but that you can do waiter and they go to the yes. freezers and pick it up and deliver. They're, um, they're using that yeah. as well. And I know I that would be like, Yes, you know, that would they cool. do have the capabilities to do like the virtual mm -hmm. and I know that a couple of restaurants have been kind of talking about it. But it's also a great way to kind of test the waters to exactly. see how your food is is going to be. Um but it just maybe Lafayette's not quite ready for that yet, but I do know in bigger markets they do have that services. So we'll be waiting as the things <laughs> unfold with waiter. All right, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, more with Liz. So come back to us. It is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Yeah.
The Sunday nights mean the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Download the podcast every week on kpel965.com. Welcome back to Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. As always with Bob Burrell and joining tonight as guest co-host is Liz Newton-Smith with the Vintage Fork. What's been up with you? I've been noticing a lot of dining out, a lot of cooking at home. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Petey bought a smoker. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a deal he could not pass up. It was 100 bucks for this like $450, $500 smoker. Uh, Stein's not carrying that line anymore. So we got that. We smoked a bunch of chicken last Friday. It took a little longer than he thought. We were like pulling it off at like 930. He's probably listening right now wanting to kill me. <laughs> um, but and then so we did. I finally had done Spoonbill a couple times for brunch, breakfast. Um, and I think since I've been here, I've definitely done lunch. And I wrote about it on my site. Um, delicious. I think I like the lunch dinner menu a little better than the brunch menu. The brunch menu um, just seemed kind of small. It's very small. And, and if you're not like a toast person. Or if you're not a breakfast person, like yeah. they have the burger. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, like it's all more breakfast geared. Um, but we had this like grilled cheese sandwich with this tomato au gratin soup that I want to replicate so bad. Like I could have licked the bowl. It was that good. Oh man. I love a good grilled cheese and tomato soup yeah. too. Have you had the cocktails there? Cause I've been looking at the cocktail menu. Okay. So I went with my sister-in-law for lunch and I'm going to butcher this. She had like a, uh, starts with an A, like a Aperol spritz. Uh, am I saying that right? Y- I don't yes, know. you are. Um, so I had a sip of hers, but I'm not really a fruity. Um, I don't like white wine. I don't like, I don't yeah. love Prosecco. I'll have it every now and then. So it was good. I could have had it by a pool or like out on the patio on a summer day. Um, but I had a beer. Petey actually had a couple like coffee stouts from there when we went um, for the dog parade. Yeah. Yeah. He had two different kinds. They were really good. And they had the cutest like beer cups now. Um, nice. They look like a glass beer can. I don't know. I what? loved it. <laughs> so um, yeah, he really liked that. One of them I think was from Parrish, but I can't remember where the other one was from. Hmm. And then you guys went to Little Big Cup for dinner. We did. Which is something that I haven't done yet. Bob and I have been talking about it. You did the surf and turf. They have the surf and turf buffet. So we did the buffet. Well, there was nine of us. So the majority of us did do the buffet. My dad and my sister both ordered off the menu. I'm a nephew. Um, It is so cute. I've never been there. And I've got to go back during the day because I want to go outside. Yeah. Um, The, like, porch area looks adorable. It is. Um, so when we went, they had crawfish on the buffet. But by the time we got there, they were sold out. And it was like 6.30. Whoa. But put crawfish on a buffet, you're going to yeah. sell out. Um, so they decreased the price for anybody that came in after to their regular price. And it was delicious. Um, I'm trying to think. I had the gumbo, which was like spicy, which I like. Like, you know, some restaurants tone it down so much. Um, their praline chicken was delicious. And then they had these shrimp. I thought it was a cocktail. They were like marinating in this big oh, old yes. fish bowl. Oh, yes. I've seen a picture with of like it. like satsumas. It was a beautiful presentation. And I was like, oh, there's shrimp in there. That was probably my favorite thing. But my dad did order the praline chicken off of the uh, menu. And it came with this like massive waffle and like all fixings. It looked delicious. So I think next time I go, I may order something off the menu. I think that I'm. we need to go and, and do – I want to do the buffet because I haven't done that, but then also order off the menu before because their their pictures look so beautiful. And we had some appetizers off the menu that were delicious. We had this, like, fried crawfish cornbread, and we Ooh. had the crab cakes. Both highly recommend. Um, the fried crawfish thing was probably one of my favorite things I ate all night other than those shrimp that were just – like you eat with your eyes first. So yeah. It was beautiful. And then they they just tasted delicious too. Um, what have you been creating in your instant pot lately? Well, I did this like soup last week and it's like a take on like Olive Garden's minestrone soup. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, super easy, use canned beans. I ended up doing orzo pasta in it, uh, which like you just put under pressure for four minutes and then you quick release. So all in all, it takes no time. Um, so I've done that. I'm going to make the gnocchi bolognese this week. My mother-in-law is going out of town. I asked if I would make some for her to bring with her girlfriends to eat on vacation. Um, and then oh, I've been using the sous vide. I made these eggs this morning that were to die for. I th- it's on my story. So if you follow me at, on Instagram at the Vintage Fork, you can see but an hour long at 145. And I cracked them on my story. And they were just the most perfect, like, Eggs Benedict, 
like worthy eggs. Oh, nice. Without the swirling of poaching yeah. and all of that. Because that's difficult. This was easy. I dropped them in. I went and did something for an hour and I served them over a hash. And then we have lamb in the oven right now. So I cannot wait to get home and have this like r- lamb roast. That's what I was going to ask you. Where did you get the lamb in town? So I got it from Costco. I went okay. to Costco also to get a TV mount for the shed that we're redoing and walked out with succulents, um, vegetables, lamb, organization happen. containers. Like, like what? I don't even know what was going on. <laughs> um, I blacked out. Uh, but Their we got it. Their meat department is really nice. Their meat department's so nice. So I was like, Petey always talks about wanting to cook a lamb, a leg of lamb roast. So I was like, isn't this what you want to cook? It's on sale. And so we picked the smallest one. I think it was like 24 bucks, and it was $5 off at the register. And it's oh, still nice. pretty big. I definitely could probably feed at least six people, probably more with wow. it. It's, it's, it's going to be just a roast, and we're roasting it over garlic and some fresh rosemary from my brother's garden and some onions. And then I'm going to serve it just like rice and gravy. And then I bought these beautiful, like, um, colorful carrots from Costco. So I'm going to roast those too. Oh, man. I wish I would have saw that they have colorful carrots because those are my favorite. I had gotten some from from Trader Joe's and we did them yeah. for, for Christmas. But I had frozen them because I had I had went, you know, ahead of time. And, and they weren't that great from frozen. Like they were kind of soggy and they, they kind of... Man, okay, I'm going to have to go. You'll have to go and get them. There's a big old bag, and that's what I used for the hash this morning. I cubed them up and did that with some mushrooms and some onions. It was a potato-ish hash because I didn't have sweet potatoes or potatoes at my house, but it was delicious. So speaking of the gnocchi bouillonnaise, I made it since the last time you came on, and first time in the Instapot that I got the burn. Oh, no. And then it was a stressful night because I was cooking it and studying. And I also realized during the course of it that I really need to work on my chopping skills because I didn't get my carrots chopped small enough. And then Bob was freaking out because I asked him to just stir the stuff for me (laughs) um, so I could go study. And he like is so uncomfortable in the kitchen. He was acting like I was asking him to chop the carrots. Oh, that ridiculous Bob. I yeah. wonder why you got the yeah. burn notice. I've made it like so 50 times. I, but it was fine. Like I just, and I didn't have white wine. I had meant to pick up a little bottle of white wine, forgot, ended up using red wine, which is fine. I felt like yeah. that really, you know, didn't make the biggest difference. But as soon as I like put it in, it, I heard this weird noise and I was like, what's that? And it was burned. It's like, oh my God. So like I opened it up, I scraped it. I got everything off the bottom and it was fine. Like okay. it, it cooked fine. It just, I put a little too much liquid in it and i think that next time i'll tone it down. tone it down a little bit but other than that it was really good and then i didn't do and the ricotta i just um i mixed in with it yeah i do everything different every time i make it like sometimes i don't do the carrots i just use gidry's mix um if i'm being real lazy and then it calls her pancetta and I've used prosciutto because that was in my house from a leftover See, cheese board i think i just used bacon because yeah that's what i mean I had. That's my whole philosophy on life is just use what you have. So, but it was good. It was really good. I have decided that I like Greek yogurt better than ricotta cheese. I really. And I think for, I love them both. <laughs> I'm going to try it next time with the Greek yogurt instead of the ricotta cheese. Okay. You need to make, I've been making bread out of Greek yogurt. Really? Um, and it's so easy and it's actually good. I try everything on PD, my husband, because <laughs> he is honest and he will tell me if it's not good, but I've done bagels, I've done garlic knots, and I've even yeah. used whole wheat flour too, which I'm not usually the biggest whole wheat person. Um, but I mean, they're really good. Skinny taste has like a basic recipe and you just kind of go from there but it's flour greek yogurt baking powder or baking soda um some salt and it forms dough in like seconds it's crazy it's crazy hmm. we were talking about that we're probably gonna make i haven't like red beans and rice uh, in the oh in the i have a great pot. recipe um okay so we're gonna try to do that and i so my mom made red beans and rice growing up and we just cooked them in a slow cooker and it was one of my favorite meals like i would eat it with cornbread loved it um, the, she would like cut the sausage, like super tiny. And as an adult now knowing that the reason why she did that is because she was trying to make the sausage go further yeah. instead of having like big chunks. Anyway, um, you cut it on, on a bias. It'll go further even. Yeah. So, uh, I've seen recipes where they smash some of the beans, like, oh, to get the creamy, like the creamy, like Popeye's red beans and rice. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to give you my recipe. Okay. A bag of. 
Oh, it's on my story highlight, but it's for an hour under pressure. You have to go to the next story to know that. And I need to put it on my site. I just haven't had time. But you can take a bag of dry red beans and go from that to creamy, just deliciousness. It takes an hour under pressure, so about an hour and a half, you know, because it's got to get there. That's it was amazing. six cups of liquid, so I used four cups of chicken broth or chicken stock and two cups of water. And then I used garlic, and I used tasso along Ooh, with the yes. sausage and a couple bay leaves. Um, it is, I can't, I just, restaurant quality red beans in an Instant Pot now, at home. I have a question. Can you do the red beans and the rice together in the in Like the a pot, pot in pot? Yeah. Y'all, as long as I've had mine, I have not done a pot and pot recipe. Okay. I guarantee you can. I just don't know about an hour cooking the rice. Like No, that would be so way too I, much. So you would have to like release and then. I just use my rice cooker. I'll use my rice mm-hmm. cooker too. It's so easy. Well, I don't have a rice cooker anymore. I got rid of it for the Instant Pot, but Bob has a rice cooker. Yes, so I do. We'll use Bob. Or you can do it on the Borel stove. family rice yeah. cooker. Yeah. <laughs> we'll use that for to do the rice. Okay, good. Well, we'll be. So the key is to the mushing in the beans. As soon as it's, yeah. you let it naturally release, take your top off, and then I take a wooden spoon and I just push against the pot. And then you're not doing that to all the beans, but you have like your mushy and some of your whole yeah, ones. And then the next mm-hmm. day, second day, red beans, it thickens up. Oh, y'all, it's so good. I'm going to make that this week, I think. Okay, so that's good to know, too, because I was like, do you mash all of the beans? Or are you only doing, like, so don't go crazy like, with your mash. Don't go crazy. I think. Just mash and then look and then see how you. Y'all, want it. I'm so I excited! I feel like I'm gonna have some. Popeyes red beans and rice. Absolutely, and I've, I'm really excited about this. I, I and made, I, I can't believe I never did. I never thought to do this. And so, I never liked red beans and rice until I got them at Bios. That's your. They yep. don't mash them there. They they got a little bit. Okay, because I much. I've seen those and those look like the kind that I would have growing up too. Yeah, I'll have I'm, to make, make some cornbread to go with it. Yeah. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I made some and uh, it was like the last dish I made, I think. And I over mashed. And by the second day, it was like a bowl of uh, of pureed uh, beans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Refried beans. You could spackle your bathroom with it. Okay. I'm excited. Send me this recipe. Okay. Um, tasso in it sounds really good. It is really good. And then, so I only use Rabidou sausage. Okay. So I'm wondering if that, because it's real smoky, that's what I use in my gumbo, and I've been using it, if I make red beans and rice, I make it with that. Do you think that that's going to be too smoky for uh, it? It might not be. I mean, I use Richard's or Savoie's, or sometimes I just use if I have, like, something at home that, like, Petey's killed and we've done something with it, yeah. but it'll probably, if you like that smoky flavor, I'm sure it'll be fine. We are a Richard's family. Yeah. Uh, no, we're not. We're a Rabidou's. <laughs> I'll fight you. We're going to have to. We'll have to compromise, maybe, and sometimes do reshards and sometimes do rabidus. So I've discovered the best <laughs> way to make gum- quick gumbo, um, which, again, this is controversial. That's about to come out of my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've already decided that instead of using water to make the gumbo, you use bone broth. Okay. What? So I use that. So I cheat, and I use, last time we got Carrie's Rue, like, gumbo Mm -hmm. instant mix, okay? Okay. So, yes, I know I'm cheating. I don't make my Rue from scratch. Girl, me neither. But we can get it done in (laughs) an hour. So what you have to do is you um, you mix your water and your your bone broth in, in, in the mix. You bring it to boil. And I also really liked it because the color was darker and it was a little thicker. So you're using, like, you're using dry roux? Yes, okay. it is a dry roux. And then I add the bone broth. And then I just feel like it makes it so much more flavorful. I see. I'm a Carrie's. Uh, I, I love we Carrie's. We use Carrie's. Everything. Yes. And I'm a dry roux Carrie's person. I have PD. My husband makes the best gumbo ever, but he's using dry roux. But he, if you know the proportions... You can screw up a gumbo and use dry roux. You definitely can. But if you know how to do it and make it just that in-between thick and light, oh, so good. The seafood gumbo recipe on my site is calls for Carrie's roux. So good. But I feel like the bone broth just I really, know. like, instead of adding the water. So do you make your own bone broth? Yes. Okay. I made, so what I did is at Thanksgiving. Oh, I remember. The turkey bone, I, like, made the best bone broth. Like, it because it had all the seasoning, and I used, like, all the fat and everything from, from that bone from the bone and then um froze it 
And right after Thanksgiving, I made a turkey gumbo and it was really good. But this time I used that Carrie's gumbo mix. Okay. With the rest of the bone broth. Was this pre or post Instant Pot? Did you make it on the stove? No, this bon- was, like was like on the a first stove. Thing okay, yeah. The instant Pot. Yeah, I made the bone, the bone broth. broth. That's what I was asking. the first yes, thing I'm that I made. I, was, I meant with bone it. broth. Okay. But I feel like from now on, when I make a gumbo, I'm going to roast a chicken ahead of time. He's over here shaking his head <laughs> if you're wondering what's going on in this room. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to roast the chicken ahead of time, pull the chicken off of the bone, save that to use in the gumbo, make a bone broth, and then make the gumbo with that is what I'm going to do from now on, I think. Call me. I want a little to-go cup. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, more with Liz. So come back to us. It is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Follow Tiffany on Instagram. Just search the Lafayette Food Junkie. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and joined as guest co-host Liz Newton-Smith with The Vintage Fork. Uh, You were telling me during the break that you went to the farmer's market yesterday and you tried to get bagels and they were sold out of bagels. And that was my fault. I went to a workout class from 9.30 to 10.30, so I got there at like 10.45. But I was so happy they were sold out, but I was very sad I did not get to try any. But I did have a hand pie from Katie and Slice, Mm -hmm. and it was to die for. So my favorite food in the world is corn. Um, I'm from Bunky. I don't know if the Corn Festival has anything to do with it, but it was a cross shank redemption with... A uh, crawfish and a corn mock shoe. And then also got the boudin vert, which was um, like a boudin with like a basil uh, pesto sauce, mm-hmm. I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, both delicious. My sister and I each like had half and half. Um, but, you know, anything with corn is just going to be my favorite. They are doing something. They're doing like they're working on Easter stuff. And I saw it was it looked like two cookies with. <gasps> was it a chocolate cookie? Yes. That's okay. What it looked yes. like. They did. And I had already what pastries from bread and circus and I gave up sweets for Lent. So I was sending those back home <laughs> with my sister, but, um, it looked beautiful. It looked like a whoopie pie. Type yes. Of thing. That's what it, that's exactly what okay. it looked like. I was like, Oh my God. They had this like ponchatoula pop tart. Those are so delicious. Oh, uh, I kind of was like, I'm not counting that as a sweet, but I didn't have it. <laughs> I did <laughs> have strawberries it. In it. Um, but it looked beautiful. Like they just, yeah. like I said, you eat with your eyes first. That pop tart was the prettiest pop tart I've ever seen. He came on the show two years ago and he brought me like a box oh. of of them. And Can I triple host yeah. the next time that happens? <laughs> it, they were so good. Okay, I'm off the next three Saturdays, so I'm going to make this happen. My favorite thing to do now with the bagels is I'll go and get a bagel sandwich. Okay. Because it's just, his bagels are so good. I'm going back next weekend, but I'm going to be there at 8 o'clock. And then freeze I order extras, okay. freeze them, and then, because that's what he told us to do, and we ordered some for, for Christmas Day, Christmas morning. Oh, and this that's is what a good we idea. Did. So for, you can freeze them. You take them out of the freezer. You pop them in the oven at, like, 350 to get them, to let them get warm, and then you slice them, and so you have warm sliced bagels. I love a bagel. Yeah. I really do. I didn't realize how much I loved bagels until I had his bagels. Okay, then I really need to And try I'm going to try bagel. to get him back on the show next month because the last time he came that show was like to not work out well. So, um I'm I'm going to try to have Mark on again next month and and we'll yeah. talk to him. I'll make sure I tune in. And then I haven't been since Bread and Circus is back at the market. Well, I got their Wooskashir, Wooskashire, however you say it, sauce, but I haven't used it yet. Um and then like I said I got some pastries, but they were beautiful too. They had like um this like chocolate type of like dessert and then they had some kind of lemon um pastry. And then they had, like, a homemade play on Nutella. Like, they were selling it in a mason jar. Oh. And I really wanted to buy it, but sweets. Uh, 40 days from now, I mean, I'm going to go you back. I mean, technically say it's hazelnut. <laughs> and so it's hazelnut butter, which they is had, not a sweet. They had some, they had a lot of, like, can, like, jarred yeah. food. So I was, I mean, y'all know that's my favorite pizza in town. Um, They're, so. okay. So I've been seeing a lot of people, there's like the central pizza bread and circus debate uh, on who makes the best pizza. And I'm team bread and circus I all the too. way. I'm not. So I had central one time, did not like it. I had like a, a by the slice. I really did not enjoy it. I liked, you know, everything else that they have there. Um, went back and had the pizza a while after they had been open. 
It was a much better pizza, and it was good, but it's not Bread and Circus pizza. Well, don't me. get me wrong. The pizza at Central is delicious. Yeah. Their wings are really good, and the atmosphere yeah, is I adorable. Yeah, appetizers um, are amazing. And <laughs> Bread and Circus, though, I don't know. it. The Norma pizza it's just has a special spot in my heart. I don't know if that, that was my middle name is Norma. I don't know if that's why or not, but that eggplant and, oh, the cheese, so good. But they have a few new pizzas on the menu. I saw, I was looking at it today because I'm thinking that I may go there for lunch Saturday yeah. or we may try to get, because I know at a certain time their pizzas are half off. Yes, so Wednesdays, I, try I think. Wednesdays, and I think they are Saturdays okay. Um, after brunch, like from three to six. They're, I think they're half off, but... I took Bob for the first time, and we got the Norma, and he was just like, wow. The Speck and Mott's, the Norma, the one that has, like, the fennel and the sausage on it. I can't think of what it's called right now. And then, so we got one of the new ones, too. We went last Wednesday for my birth, well, part of my birthday week celebration, um, and it was, like, a cheese pizza. It had, like, four different types of cheese on it, and it had these sweet peppers. I saw it that on good. the menu, and you want to talk about good gnocchi bolognese. Like Over there. Oh, they, they have like a, do they have a sweet potato gnocchi? I don't know. I, don't I can't remember. I remember so, reading it. But and they it have looked like their gnocchi bolognese is amazing. And their garlic knots. Have uh, you had the garlic yes. knots? Yes. For a while, it was like the Eat Lafayette special. That might have been like really? two years ago. So if you said it, you would get it. Their arancini is delicious too. I always get that as an appetizer. And their egg, I could talk about the whole menu right now, but the eggplant <laughs> hummus. If you're not getting pizza, yes. get that because it's on the pizza bread itself, and it could legitimately feed a family of 15. It is huge it's, it's and delicious. Like, it's basically a pizza itself. Uh, like, I think we're going to do this Saturday night. We're going to get takeout yeah. from from them because we're celebrating my, you know, weekend of freedom because it's my first Saturday off in three weeks, and then also I'm finished with school for the quarter. So I think we're going to get takeout pizzas Treat from there, yourself. and we may do an eggplant pizza <laughs> the hummus pizza well have you done their late night like i haven't done it in a while and it's funny to me because when they first started doing it that was what i did every saturday night like i was there that was what i did and now i am in bed oh, me too by That's the my time problem. it happens and so it, it does not happen well last night it was like a ramen like late night and it looked so good. And I had their ramen like a long time ago before they got their pizza oven. And it was, I remember it being delicious. And then I, got, I was on my phone in my bed last night. And I was like, oh, I'm not hungry. So I need to go to sleep. But I really wanted it this morning when I like woke up. I think I dreamed about it. The last time I went was when they had their balmy night last year. And I got one of everything. And then I took it to go. And I like brought it to Bob because Bob couldn't go. But Bob hasn't been. And, and I've been wanting to take him to experience it too because it's and it's so crazy to me because something that was so much part of my life for a while is I have not been in and I don't know how long oh it's so good I hadn't been in a while when we went last Wednesday and it was just as good as always so what's coming up on the vintage fork so I've been kind of semi reviewing some restaurants in town or things to do in town so I have spoon bill up there I also have blue dog and I have my social post ready to go, but I just have to upload the pictures to it. Um, so I'd like to get that out this week. So we went to social about three weeks ago. And we get a lot of live close by. And I really do love the food there. I haven't and, been in a while. And for a while, that was my favorite restaurant. Yeah. Right so I've never had the salmon. And that's what Petey got. It was really good. Um, but yeah, I talk about that. I talk about the steak and frites and the mac and cheese, um, the fried chicken, the bread spread. Um, so I think I'm going to post that this week. Uh, and then I'm going to try and get the minestrone soup recipe up there for the Instant Pot. But I've had a ton of people ask for the slow cooker version. So I'm going to play around with it. Um, that is kind of what's going on. I'm going to Charleston at the end of the month. So nice. be on the lookout for an itinerary post of that when I get back. And I've got to get my Austin itinerary up. I promise that's coming soon. <laughs> Liz, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It is always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so much fun. Thank you for having me. All right, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. This is Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL, and this is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy eating, Acadiana. Okay, yeah. we have we have 20 seconds left. Do you want to you want to do some you want to do some sound effects for the last 20 minutes of the show? All yeah, right. let's DJ up. All right. Thanks, guys.